Welcome to eMedia Podcast, Emmanuel Church's very own podcast platform. Here, you'll find our latest sermon series and our weekly podcast show episodes based on a variety of topics impacting us here on Delmarva and around the world. Every single week, together, we'll unpack those topics, ranging from the fun and lighthearted stuff to even the more serious discussions. But we'll use the Word of God as our guide. Be sure you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, download the Emmanuel Church app so you're staying up to date with all that's happening here at Emmanuel Church. Now, here's our latest episode from the eMedia Podcast. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again for another episode of AM with the PM here with Nicole, as I normally am, having a conversation today. And with every conversation, there must be coffee. Or tea. Or tea, but preferably coffee. But anyway, (laughs) uh, but anyway, uh, sorry, inside joke. Uh, um, So uh, today we're talking about uh, our past. Yeah. Now, we all have a past. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Every single one of us. Every single one of us have a past. Yeah. And the issue for many of us is we can't get past our our past. past. We get stuck there. And a lot of it can be self-condemnation. A lot of it can be self-doubt. A lot of it can also be people that are surrounding us, our our surroundings that keep us stuck there. So how do we get out of there? Oh, man. It's hard, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, One thing, though, I I, want to say about our past is... As we begin to work out of our past, we yeah. got to we've got to realize uh, number one that sometimes when we give our life to Christ mm-hmm. and we're trying to move on and there's a self condemnation, sometimes there are repercussions that we have to face with our past. So That's we have good. to clarify and yeah. get a good perspective, a good base, a good foundation. That is, when I'm trying to get past my past, and it seems like it keeps. Coming back back, up, there are certain things that are repercussions. We can't get around it, that there are repercussions from our past that we just have to walk through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there's things that just, just, we have to put that out there first before we even talk about how to deal with it. Yes. That there are repercussions and certain things that we can work out of and things Mm -hmm. can get better, but sometimes we're going to have to live with repercussions, but God gives us the strength Yes. to live with some of the repercussions or just to... um, to be able to handle them appropriately as we move forward. Yeah. But as we deal with our past, we've got to learn to create a divide, a separation between who you once were mm-hmm. and who you are now. Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, yeah. he is a new creation. The old has gone. Do you see the separation? Mm-hmm. The old is gone. Mm-hmm. The new has come. The old is gone, the new has come. And so many times when it comes to dealing with our past, we make the old and the new partners again. Yeah. Rather that's good. than creating the separation of who we are now. So whenever they get entangled, the the reason why we have problems getting over our past or we keep dealing with it is because we keep entangling yeah, yeah. the past and the new yeah. rather than separating mm-hmm. um, them. We live in a society that that's what they tend to do. There's no separation. What you've done, the the people you've hurt, the places you've gone, the things you've been involved in, that's Mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. But the Bible makes it very clear what Jesus did, uh, uh, reconciling us from our sins, um, making us alive in him. It's gotten rid of the old and, br- and brought the new. So the world tries to put it like this, mm-hmm. right? It's together, but it's not any longer that because of the sacrifice he made on our behalf, he separated, yes. right? That you are a new creature in Christ. The old is gone. The new has come. And uh, we have to keep it yeah, like that and not, yeah. not intertangle yeah. it. So you deal with your past by making sure that you put your past in its place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's behind you. It's gone. The new has come. And every time it tries to come up, you got to create that separation. Mm -hmm. Said, no, 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 no. The Bible tells me there is therefore now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. you might have those regrets start coming back up again. But no, no, no. I I create the separation to know that I'm no longer that person. Yeah. Yes, it's what I did, but it's it's not who I am. Yes. I have a new identity in him. Yes. And in Christ, and that, that that's where you've got to operate out of. Something we often hear um, when people are talking about their past is the term soul ties. 
Mm. And all of us have some kind of soul ties. Yeah. So can we explain what soul ties are and how to cut those ties? Wow, well, uh, the soul tie really is what we talk about, that inner tangle. Inter yeah. yeah, we... With our past, we do have those ties, mm -hmm. that, that soul tie, that connection to yeah. what we did. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you also have to think about, um, with those soul ties, you have to think about the replacement of your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what Christ does. Yeah. Um, he really replaces, re, well, a theological term is regeneration mm, of your mm -hmm, heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he, he regenerates it. He, he reconciles it and he regenerates it. So that way it, it is like a brand new heart. I think about open heart surgery, a yeah, heart transplant that's yeah, happening. That's you know, um, you see people who go underneath the knife, which my, my father had open heart surgery. Uh, it's, it, it's been probably eight years ago now. Um, maybe even coming up on 10 years, it's time flies, but yeah. And it's and it's a difficult procedure, man. Mm -hmm. When you when you go in, they go underneath the the knife, and all he all he had was some some re valve replacements. Right, right. But I do know a lady who who uh, just recently passed away, but years ago, 15, 20 years ago, she had a, a heart replacement, mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. another heart put in. Yeah. And it's unbelievable the thought of someone else's heart is beating you? on the inside yeah, of you. It's yeah, wild. Yeah. The, the complete replacement of yeah. the whole thing yeah. now living inside of you yeah. and how the body wants to reject that. Mm -hmm. But then you take this medication yes. to make sure that it does, no longer rejects and that the heart um, stays in beat and in connection. And that's what's happening inside mm -hmm. of your soul when you have yes. these soul ties inside of you. You have to remember that Sin tries to create that that mm -hmm. soul tie, yeah. but you have a heart replacement, yeah. and the heart that you get now is the 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 one of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He gives you yes. a new heart, yeah. but oftentimes our own humanity wants to reject that mm -hmm. heart that's inside of us yeah. and and bring up these things from the past and problems and soul ties. But but what the Word of God does. Yeah. What prayer does, yeah. what community does yeah. inside the church yeah. is that's that pill to make sure we don't reject what God has replaced. Right. And so um, what I want to make sure you do is that when you feel those soul ties, mm -hmm. hey, look, remember, you got a new heart living inside yeah. of you. Yeah. And if you stay in the word, if you stay in fellowship, if you stay in worship, if you stay in connection with, the, with believers mm -hmm. and people who encourage you, that is what makes sure that your humanity doesn't reject what God yeah. has replaced on the inside of you. Yeah. And then I think also um, grace, granting yourself grace, yep. because it's it's hard sometimes getting over things of your past, especially moments where you're like, I'm a little disappointed in myself. Um, and then you'll have these opportunities or these these seasons where you're doing great. Yeah. And you're like, OK, I, I'm, I feel free from this. But then something happens and you slip up again. Mm -hmm. What should we do in those moments? And what encouraging word do we have for people that well, are currently well, in that space Number right one, now? you're normal mm -hmm. when you feel that way. Yeah. I think a lot of people say, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Why do I, why do I feel this way? Yeah. And, uh, but it's normal. We're going to have yeah. uh, those times where we're not going to feel worthy enough or I don't feel good enough. And, um, but that's what I love about the grace of God this world does not offer grace. Yeah. And um, so we don't, we don't really know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when God gives us grace, we feel good in one moment, but yeah. the self-condemnation or the what's wrong with me, that comes because um, that's what humanity, humanity does with one yeah. another. You know, we yeah. just, we, we don't give that grace. And so mm -hmm. we don't know what to do with it. And mm -hmm. to know that God's grace loves us even despite of us sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah. that's what God grace does is an unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. That's what grace is. So it's nothing you can do to earn it. Yeah. It's nothing you can do. And, and that's what humanity does it, is it places levels yeah. or hurdles to jump through in yeah. order to get grace or in order to be good enough. Yeah. And so that, that's something instinctively inside of us says, I'm not good enough. Yeah. I can't, I don't deserve it. I can't. Yeah. That's because we don't, we don't have the understanding of what God's grace yeah. is and an unmerited favor, yeah. not by your works so that no one can boast. It's done by yes. the work of God. Yes. It's God's unmerited yes. favor yeah. 
yeah. to you that he's given you that um, we got to learn to now live in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, I think, one way. How yeah, and that's the core of the song, Reckless Love, that I know the first mm -hmm. time I heard it tore me up because, again, I think comprehending God's grace and his love for us, it doesn't make sense, and which is definitely why I think it's reckless in its, in its mm -hmm. ways because for humanity that does not deserve God's love, there's nothing that we can do to earn it. He just... He loves us already at this fullest capacity. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Um, but also I think reminding ourselves that if God says that we're free, we're free. The scripture says who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter the mistake that we may make after leaving our past. We're still free. We can't go back. Right. We're free. And I yeah. think just continuously reminding ourselves that we're free. Um, for a lot of us also, um, we may question, okay, why did I go through that in my past? What purpose did that serve? How does our past relate to our purpose in oh, life? Oh, man. Wow. See, why are you not asking these I try. I'm questions? a journalist, so I try. I try man. to answer these questions. <laughs> our past always plays a part yeah. in our purpose. Um, God never wastes anything. That's so good. Yeah. And to think we've gone through something that will not play a part of who we are. That's not how it works. God yeah. never wastes anything. Yeah. Even the terrible things we have done, yeah. God will not waste it. The Bible says in the book of Romans 8, 28, and yes. we know that God works all, all things, things together yes. for good yeah. for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Yeah. He never wastes it. He works it in somehow. Yeah. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I can't comprehend it. But God will take pain, he'll take problems, he'll make difficulties that you've, that you've gone through or seasons you've messed up, and he'll work it somehow in for the good, yeah. and it becomes a part of the testimony of that grace we've talked about. Yes. There is nothing I love more than a redemptive story. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I love more. Yeah. And to hear how God has changed somebody, hear about old ways and now they've become new ways and how God has yeah. worked it out. And so I think a lot of that is too, that, that God is creating a story with how he's working it out. Yes. And that um, you are the hope for somebody else. Yes. Your story is. Yeah. And that there are other people that can relate to you yeah. um, with what you've gone through, what you've been a part of. Um, that they can they can see, man, God, God can redeem my past too. Yes. If he can redeem you, he can redeem me. So I think it, uh, the past always plays a part of yeah. your purpose. That's the final part. Um, Revelation talks about we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yep. And so that testimony, your story, is that last part, I think, that um, we shouldn't be ashamed of. Um, again, if, if God has set us free, we are free. So be bold in your testimony. Really, I agree. That's what I'm hearing. I agree. Yeah. That's good. And then when we pray it on out? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Lord, thank you for this opportunity we've had to discuss our past. And I pray specifically for people that are watching today that it keeps coming back up. Yeah. The sense of condemnation or uh, maybe it's a failed relationship that it keeps coming back up. The decisions you've made or a, maybe it was a failed marriage or or a sin or difficulty or a, an addiction yeah. from the past, it just keeps creeping back up and there's a self-condemnation that likes to take over. Lord, help them put their past in their place. Yeah. The old is gone, the new has come. Quit tangling them together. You have separated them and you have created a new heart, yes. a new person with a new passion and a new purpose. Help us see that, God. Put the past in its place Learn how to appropriately deal with it, God, so we can move forward in you. In Jesus' name, amen.